Chris, congratulations. Thank Imperial you. College London are the first team through scrutineering at Formula Student 2025. That's yeah. a remarkable achievement, especially at before five o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. It's, How are uh, you feeling? Uh, phenomenal. Um, yeah, we've gone from, I think, about 13 years since we finished endurance and it's been about another 10 years since we've even done any sort of dynamic events. Well, I was going to say, I've been commentating for four years myself and to be completely honest with you, I, until today, I wasn't aware that Imperial College London had a team. Yeah, we've been, uh, we've been gone for a while. Uh, yeah. How have you been gone from nowhere to everywhere in the space of a year? Because you were an unknown last year. We, a lot of things had to go right, really. Uh, we went from EV back to IC just because we needed what we realized we needed was for people to see what it takes for a car to actually get moving and for the team to have some sort of success. And if we kept on pushing the EV project, realistically, we wouldn't have gotten anywhere anytime soon. We were, every year we thought we were closer, but there was always a whole can of worms that we just hadn't opened yet. And so we decided, let's go back to basics. We've got a new faculty advisor who's come in, who is more dedicated to our project, who's a petrol head. We've got another faculty as a head of department all of whom back what we're doing and they've got a significant more not only interest but a lot uh, they've got a lot more knowledge in the area because power electronics is not something that the university puts a lot of money researching into at least not on a scale of 400 600 volt battery packs so we decided to go where the expertise was and the expertise laying internal combustion. So talk us through the design. You've gone back to basics. What car have Imperial College entered into Formula Student this year? So we've got a chassis that's been inherited from an inherent EV design. It was designed three years ago and it got to our garage doors two years ago. Last year, we then had the suspension put on and we had a lot of the parts for an EV system to go in there. Uh, and then basically a bunch of those tabs that we welded on came off and we welded on a new engine mount. We stuck to what we had. It did mean that there were compromises made here and there. That engine, for example, doesn't come off without the oil sump coming off of it. Right, okay. Uh, the drivetrain alignment was quite difficult. We had to I align was it to say, the engine yeah, instead it, of the space frame. So you even, sorry, say that again? We've had to align the drivetrain to the engine right. uh, instead of using the space frame, which normally is what you would do anyway, but the space frame's not quite what we had in CAD either. And so we're working with a lot of legacy parts, basically. So it's almost a Frankenstein of various different areas worth of cars. Almost so, yeah. There was a lot of bits, there was a lot of times where we were putting things on and we came to the realization that uh, we have to work with the resources that we have. We sort of can't go back and reinvent the wheel because we're still working on a relatively small budget. But the chassis has never been into, entered into Formula Student before. We got special compensation to reuse it this year after technically being a part of FS class last year. but we. Functionally, did nothing else other than the static events last year. Right. We went for an educational screw with scrutineers last year. I see. Okay. Uh, but nothing real in terms of being FS class. And what powertrain have you got in the back? We've got a Kawasaki Ninja 400 in the back e of the car now. I like that bike. It's a yeah, nice bike. we've taken a lot of inspiration from uh, Coventry. We're just there. Well, yeah, I've noticed you even got a blue color scheme as well. So there really, yeah, there, there well, is. Yeah, that comes more from the uni itself. But, yeah. Um, there, there were a lot of design choices that were inspired by uh, Coventry along the way just simply because we saw their success and we decided mimicking them might have been the best and easiest way to move forward for us. Rock and roll. Okay, so what are you aiming for this year? You've got through scrutineering. Yeah. So first team to do so. I mean, we, we, I popped into the paddock immediately afterwards and you were there, a hearts and mind speech with the whole team. And it was like a military operation. So no wonder you did so well. What was the <laughs> secret to getting through scrutineering so quickly? Uh, really, it was spending the entire year being absolutely single-minded on one goal. And it's sort of, we knew of, of that going into it. And we were reinforced that that belief was the right way to go when we went to learn to win. Where we went in the year, starting the year saying, what's our goal? Our goal is finish endurance. No matter what it is, regardless of what the static events do or, or what the performance of the car is, reliability and finishing endurance is our main objective. And we got to, we got to learn to win and they basically, every, every judge and every member of staff that we spoke to there agreed in principle what we were saying, which was you need to have just one goal and go for it. And so we've had a banner in our garage that said finish endurance. Every single time someone has brought up a design question and said, should we do this or should we do this? This give us performance. The question has always come down to does it affect us finishing endurance? If someone says it's going to cost us two, three hundred pounds, we'll get a little bit of performance out of it. 
Does it help us finish endurance? No. Can we use the money to something else that will improve our chances of uh, being more reliable throughout endurance? Yes, the money's going to reliability. Excellent stuff. This all sounds very much in line with the conversation I had with Michael, who's a Formula student legend all the way back to the 80s. He was yeah. talking about clear leadership, clear goals, budget conscience, and making sure that everyone works together cohesively. So it, yeah. it's all lining up and the success is there for all to see. So you're, I was going to ask what your target was for this year. I can see clearly it's finishing endurance. Yep, so we're uh, jobs half done. Jobs half done. How much testing time have you got under your belt so far? We, we did actually really well in terms of testing. We set very ambitious goals at the beginning of the year. So typically, we in previous years, you would have found that our schedule aligned with finishing the car build around May, June. Whereas we were very ambitious and we said we're going to finish it in December. Wow. Um, that obviously didn't happen. No, but it's, by it's the good time to be ambitious. Shoot for the stars and hit the moon. Yeah, January rolled around and we actually had a fully built car uh, that could roll under its own power. <laughs> So February 19th was our first track test at Bister Motion. Yep. Uh, we did about half an hour of running until the different, uh, differential started uh, clicking a lot. Uh, so the entire drivetrain came apart and that was about, yeah, that reduced our runtime to about half an hour. But it was a proof of concept to everyone there that the car moves. Yeah. Uh, then it was a month of just hard work. A month later, then we had a car that was, I'd say about 70 to 80% there of what we have right now. And that was almost a full eight hours of running, where we just kept switching drivers, having them go around, incrementally increasing the runtime. Uh, and then just about two, three weeks ago, we managed to finish an endurance simulation with two of our drivers. Excellent. So and all in all, it was about over 100 kilometers of testing. Over 100 kilometers of testing. Yeah. So everything really has been shaken down well and truly. Yeah. So this year is the first time at FS UK we're running with the unlimited dynamic runs on the Saturday. Yeah. Have you accounted for that in your strategy going into the dynamic events? Yeah, so what we found at Bister Motion when we did our endurance and sort of uh, our autocross testing was that our drivers got better and better the more times they did the autocross track. Uh, so we figured our chances of finish, not only finishing endurance, but at least not knocking down as many cones was making sure that our drivers for endurance were the same as those for autocross. So that you just get to continue repeating the track until they're used to it and they know exactly where to break, exactly when to turn. Because of course running, need to do. running multiple times does increase the risk of mechanical failure because you're running through again yeah. and again and again. Is that something else you've considered? We've, we've considered it and we're aware of some parts of the car that might fatigue a little bit more because of that. But just the sheer amount of running that we've been able to do over the course of the year, we're confident that whatever we do at autocross won't come anywhere near what we've been doing uh, over the last couple of track tests. This all sounds so positive. I can't wait to see that out on track. You're Thank a well-oiled you. machine. You've done yeah. remarkably well. Congratulations, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. No worries.